Yo, yo, what up? This is Raphael, director of Scotty NBA Big Boy. As you can see, I got a special guest here, Jake LaRavia, one of the biggest risers in this draft. I'll be honest, he was not someone that I saw as a potential first round pick at this time last year. So let's, let's just get right into it. This time last year, you were in the transfer portal. Yep. You decided to go to Wake Forest after leaving Indiana State. Honestly, did you see yourself being in this position? I mean, yeah, I always had faith in myself to to get to this point, um, you know, in my career. Uh, but Wake was able to, you know, really develop my game a lot, and uh, I think that's why I had, uh, you know, chose to go there. So when you say Wake developed or played a role in developing your game, what did they do that was different that put you in this position? Um, I was able to, you know, show a lot more of my abilities uh, with a team. Uh, I played on a very good team this year. Uh, Wake Forest and um, I was really able to like showcase you know certain abilities that I might not have had in the past um, passing ability you know playing defense shooting um, just a lot of parts of my game that maybe people hadn't seen before yeah I mean I feel like you showed a lot this year you showed ball handling obviously you can shoot the ball saw you bringing the ball to court from time to time yeah. I think your your cutting is underrated yeah like a very very good cutter um, I like how you got a little bully ball in your game. If you got a little guard against you, you're going to back them down. So, you I mean, you have so many different skill sets that you bring to the table. What do you think is, like, your, your best asset that you bring? Um, just being able to be a mismatch pretty much um, wherever I'm at on the court. If I'm, if I'm playing, you know, the, the four-man, I'll, I'll probably be able to, you know, it'll probably be a, a slower person. I mean, I'll be able to beat them off the wing. And, if, you know, I'm playing more of the guard position, then I'll have a smaller guy. I mean, I can take him in the post and, you know, get busy down there. Yeah, speaking of getting busy, so I've attended <laughs> your workout the last, well, I mean, you had five workouts yesterday. Yeah. So I, I got here late. Um, I flew all the way from Dallas to New York, got to New York, took – a bus to Tom's River. That's how bad I wanted to see, to see Jake, uh, to see his workout and get a chance to, you know, just get, get to know you. So I'm watching your workout this morning and you were like for real getting busy. Like I seen you dancing with the ball. Like that's something that I didn't see a whole lot of at, at Wake Forest. So is there anything like in this pre-draft process that you want to show teams that you can do, even though you showed a lot this season, but is there more to your game that you weren't able to fully showcase? Yeah, for sure. There's um, there's a lot to my game for sure that I, you know, uh, I feel like I, I played a certain role at Wake Forest. I was definitely, you know, one of the players that, you know, had to score and, you know, um, get buckets every game. But there's still certain things that, you know, I, I didn't want to do during the game because, you know, at the end of the day, I want to win. Mm -hmm. And, um you know, when, when I'm in workouts and I'm working on, you know, dribble step backs or off the dribble shots or anything like that, um, you know, that's, that's just kind of the stuff that I want to, you know, show teams that I can do as I can score however, whatever way I want. Yeah, I watched a lot of your film and uh, probably almost every, every play. And I, I knew that you had some offensive creativity as far as like creating your own shot. Mm -hmm. But the shots that you were working on today was like, I mean, just shots that use tough shots like spin moves step backs and i didn't know you had all of that in, in in your bag or in your toolbox do you think like you'll have an opportunity to showcase that in in the nba or even in, even in the workouts do you think 100%. like you're playing three on three or two on two you'll be able to showcase everything that you have yeah i mean i'm definitely gonna be showcasing everything that i have when i go into workouts and um <clears throat> as i take this next step um just because, you know, I just want to show teams that I'm able to do. I'm able to, you know, create my own shot, whatever it is, whether it's a three, a mid-range, um, you know, a, a mid-range, you know, post-fade, anything like that. I want to be able to show I can, you know, score at all three levels at a high level. So you shot the ball well this year from, from three, but I feel like, just my opinion, you've got better since yeah. the end of the season. Like, what's a typical day like for you as far as the number of shots that you're getting up? I mean, I, I mentioned you did five workouts. I heard five, yeah. Um, but for the rest of the day, I'm, I'm going to, like, see what a day is like for you. But how many shots are you getting up a day? Yeah, we have four or five workouts a day, but usually two of them are off the court, whether it's, you know, a mobility strength exercise or, like, a field or pool workout. Um, and, but we usually have at least two on-court workouts, and um, I couldn't really guess how many shots I put up, but um, it's, it's a lot it's for a sure. Lot. So what's a typical day like for you? Um, wake up early morning. Uh, so like Tuesday, we, we woke up early morning. I got a field workout in at 7 a.m. 
right after that, straight to the gym, skills workout. Um, got a little bit of a break, then back to the gym for a strength workout, and then another skills workout right after that. And then um, go back to the gym late night for a late night uh, basketball workout as well. See, that's what I saw. So I saw yeah. the late workout. Right. It was like at 9 o'clock. Yeah. And you got up, I, I'm, I'm guessing, four or 500 shots. Yeah. And I was impressed with, like, your conditioning because if you had did all of that earlier in the day <laughs> and wanted to come back late at night, you I mean, I think a lot of guys would be done after two or three workouts. But then you still had the legs. Your shot looked good. And so I'm like, man, if you, if you shot that well after four workouts at night, I imagine, like, it's going to look even better, yeah. better, better in the day. So... You mentioned like a typical day. Like, how has this draft process been for you? I mean, it's been really exciting. Um, it's it's just a new journey in my life, and you know, I've been I've been dreaming about it for a long time, and you know, it's it's finally starting to, <clears throat> you know, come in. And I've never really been able to focus just on basketball workouts. You know, I've always had to, you know, focus on school as well. So kind of just being able to, you know, work out four or five times a day, um, it, it's really helped. Especially my conditioning. You talked about that. Uh, the first week I was here, just, you know, my conditioning, I was just getting used to it, obviously. But uh, now now I'm definitely almost in peak shape. I'm, I'm pretty much there. You are around two months away from your life changing. Has it, has it fully hit you yet? I wouldn't say it's fully hit me. Um, I'm still kind of, like, locked in on, on the process and actually getting there. Um, but it's it's exciting. Everything's coming into fruition, and I I'm excited for it. So you're you're in Tom's River, not L.A. You're not in Miami. You're not in New York. Why why Tom's River? I mean, this is a place that's. I mean, I'm looking out, and it's a nice river in the background. It's, it's not a place where there's a lot of distractions. Was that by by choice to just be somewhere where you can just lock in and just focus on? On basketball? Yeah, I mean, this is my type of scene. You know, it's not real big city. I can I can lock in on basketball and <clears throat> not have to worry about anything else, so it's good. All right, so like I said, we're a, a couple of, of months away from, from the draft. If I'm a GM, all right, let's just put you on the hot seat here. I'm the general manager of a team. I have a first-round pick, and I'm interviewing you and everybody else that is on the board. What? What do you bring to the table? Like, why you? Uh, I mean, I feel like wherever you throw me, I can, I can exceed in that role. I think I'm a perfect role player. And um, I'm an all-around player. I can do everything. So that's why I'm a, I'm a coach's player, too. So wherever the coach wants to put me, I think I'm, I'm good for it. So, And I want to win games. I'm a winner. Um, I have a lot of passion for basketball. So You are from Indianapolis. Indiana's like a big basketball state. When you think of Indiana, you think of basketball. My dad is from Indianapolis. I remember as a kid going there and seeing every house in the suburbs, of course, every house had a basketball court or a basketball hoop in their yard. How has growing up in Indiana shaped you as a, as a basketball player? Yeah, I mean, you're right. I feel like in Indiana, you know, everyone just lives and breathes basketball. Um, there's a very good culture around it, and I think it's the right culture. Um, uh, you know, speaking of, you know, hoops in front of yards, I had one in my driveway. I was out there every night, you know, it's just, basketball is different in Indiana and that, you know, that's just how we like it. Um, it's good. So how did you end up at Indiana State? Yeah, so out of high school, I was just super under-recruited um, and I was originally committed to Southern Illinois Edwardsville actually. And um, the coach there had actually got fired. So I, you know, decided to decommit. And then um, Indiana State was the first one to reach out to me and that was, uh, you know, Coach Lansing. And, uh, you know, I, I felt like I connected with him, so I decided to commit to Indiana State. Do you feel like you were a late bloomer or just underrated or a combination of both? Yeah, I would say a combination of both. You know, like, I don't think my size, you know, really got there until um, junior, senior year. Uh, I, had a, I had a huge growth spurt from sophomore to junior year where I grew from, like, six foot to six six. So that helps, obviously. And, um just like exposure level like I really didn't get a lot of opportunities in high school to be able to you know showcase my talents at the at the top level I played for like a a super under the radar AAU team that you know really not a lot of people you know know and um you know AAU is definitely one of the biggest places to get recruited from and so when when you don't play on one of those top teams it's harder so was it by choice to not play on one of those top teams were you being loyal to 
to a team that had been there from day one. Because a lot of guys, you know, they, they'll start off on one team, but their goal is I need to get on a sneaker circuit team. Yeah. So um, I had started on the team my freshman year when, you know, I still, you know, was becoming a, a better basketball player. I was, I was only like 5'10", and um, is, my coach was Rick Thomas. And, um, you know, I, wanted, I was loyal to him. That's, that's how I usually am with coaches. And, you know, when it, when it got to the junior year, you know, I, I had thought about going to a higher team, but I, I wanted to stick with him, and that's what I ended up doing. Do you feel like it's benefited you in a sense that you weren't, like, highly touted highly regarded you weren't reading about yourself on like all the top black basketball blogs do you think that has kind of like driven you or pushed you to where you are today because you i mean you can go back and look and i don't you know want to mention names but you can go back and look at your high school graduation yeah. class and see guys that were so much more high i mean they were i mean bigger better recruits at the time yeah. and you've passed them up so do you think like that hunger of, of being like underrated pushed you to where you're at today a hundred percent um you know it's like the chip on your shoulder yep. and uh you know i played with that my whole life kind of always been the underdog but you know that's my favorite thing to do that's my mentality all the time and uh th that's how i play i play with a chip on my shoulder <laughs> so and again this is going back to your question so you, you've been like this underdog or under the radar your whole life then you transfer to wake forest at the beginning of the year, you know, it's not really making a ripple of, like, high-impact transfers in a sense. And then your name just starts to go, you know, it's buzzing and buzzing and buzzing. So now you're literally in, like, one year going from under the radar to, I think, your first-round pick. I, I made the mistake. I have had you at 32 on my last mock, <laughs> which <laughs> I have you as a solid first-rounder on, on the next one. So, like, again, how, how does that feel? Does it feel like, all right, all the work I've put in is paying off? Like, what's, what's going through your, your mind? Uh, yeah, 100%. It's just, like, finally being able to see that all, all the hard work that I've, that I've been putting in for so many years, it's, it's finally coming into fruition. And, you know, everyone's starting to really see, you know, who Jake LaRavia is. And, um, you know, it's something that I've always wanted, something I've always dreamed of. And you really don't know what's going to happen until it happens. Yeah, and, yeah. and that's kind of how this whole process has been. Like, I always knew I could do this, but, you know, it's happening now. And, you know, I, I finally see it. So let's go back to, like, your childhood and your development. Because you're 6'8", but you can do so many different things. How did you develop that? Was it like somebody put the ball in your hands when you were younger? I know you said you had a growth spurt. Is that... Yeah. Is that the reason why you have the guard skills and the, the feel and the passing? Yeah, all the way up until I'd say junior year of high school, I was I was a point guard because I was like middle school, I was probably like five eight, five nine. So, you know, I was playing PG there, ball was always in my hands, you know, so I was able to develop those guard skills. And as I got taller, you know, I was able to develop the post skills and then they combined when I got into college and I just had the whole bag. Are your, are your parents tall? So did you know you were going to be tall? Yeah, so uh, both my parents are 6'2", and um, my older brother was always tall, so I figured I would be tall too. Um, so yeah, height just, height just runs well in my family. It's weird though, like if two parents are 5'2", they're not going to produce a kid that's 5'8". Right. <laughs> but if two parents are 6'2", yeah. it's, it's so weird yeah, it definitely how works. that happens. Yeah. So, so really, was it just like intentional for you to play point guard and knowing you're going to hit a growth spurt or were you just playing point because you had to? Yeah, I think I was just playing point because I, I mean, I was I was little and I was frail. So there's really nowhere else you could put me. So um, but I mean, it all worked out at the end of the day. So uh, I'm glad that that happened. So do you think you can play some point forward in, in the next level? A hundred percent. You know, I think, you know, some of the skills and, you know, parts of my game that that are able to excel are going to be like the passing ability, just my court vision overall, like the IQ that comes with it. Um, and that's why I think, you know, I would be able to play point forward. It's funny you say that because, I mean, I've watched enough basketball and I've seen where, you know, you listen to a game and they're like, oh, this guy used to be a, a point guard because he's tall. And you're like, I don't see the skills. Yeah. But for you, it, it makes sense because like some of the passes you make, like, not just assist, but like the way you move the ball, or yeah. like I've seen where you got the ball on a short roll and, and yeah. you then you hit the cutters. Like you have the feel and IQ of someone that used to make decisions, still or 
used to having the ball in their hands and making decisions. While some guys, I just don't see it. So, yeah. so that so that makes a lot of sense. Coming coming into this off season, I don't even know if it's an off season because you're not really <laughs> taking a break. But what is your your main goal or focus to to improve on? Um, probably just working on my body, but also you know getting a tighter handle. I think that's been the biggest thing for me. I know at Wake I. I want to say I struggle with it, but um, you know there was a lot of times where I would have turnovers just off me losing the ball myself. So just being able to get a tighter handle is—I mean, it's always good. I feel like at any level you have to be able to handle the ball. Yeah. Um, so getting a tighter handle, you know, perfecting my shot, um, working on my body, get get into that peak shape. You know, all all of it's working out. So here's something about you that was really interesting to me. You you took a, a step up in competition. So you played against. I mean, Duke has maybe five guys that can get drafted. But I feel like you got better as your competition got better. Is that something that, that you've noticed or or was it having better teammates or what was it that, that made you or was it your work you put in last off season? Yeah, I mean I think it's I mean I think it's a combination of everything. It's just like the work I've put in all together, but you know, also being at this level you have to, you know, perform at a higher level as well. And um, it, I mean, it's also with this team. Like the the team I played with this year at Wake was was amazing, and we had so many so many pieces and so many talented players that made made my life easier, made made me look you know the way I did because we had just had so many aspects that we could you know that we could go to. So let's let's get back to the draft in a sense. When was the first time you saw your name mentioned as an NBA draft prospect? Probably after the Duke game. It was the first time I really started to notice. And or maybe after the UNC game. I mean, those are obviously two of the... Yeah. So what was it about both games that, that you felt that kind of put you on the map? Um, well, I had the 30-point double-double against UNC, and I was only like one of four or so players that had ever done that. Um, you know, and that kind of started, you know, creating some buzz around my name. And then having 19 and 10 at Duke um, off like... I had like a couple three-pointers that game, so... That helps, you know, just being able to, when, when you're playing against teams like that, that are, you know, nationally known all the time, um, you're, you're going to get, you know, more buzz off that. So I like to ask, like, probably some of the weirdest questions, but, you know, you're going from Indiana State, you, you knew that you were taking a bump up by going to the ACC. Yeah. So, like, how was it playing in, like, these legendary arenas? Like, you know, the, the fans, did you feel like, okay, this is big time college basketball here? Yeah, uh, playing at Cameron was easily the best college experience I've had. Um, like, th those are my favorite kind of atmospheres. You know, the students were talking the whole game. Uh, they were saying a lot of stuff to me, whether it was pre-game or during the game. Um, but easily Cameron was the, was the best experience. So I like to, I mean, I guess just ask questions to show, like, the human element in it, you know, because, of course, everybody wants to talk about the basketball. So, but I know, like, Going in a camera, like who who doesn't dream about that as as a kid that plays basketball, playing in that environment, and playing against Coach K and all of that, and then like for you having a good game against Duke and all that. So when you first saw your name on like draft boards, what was your like? Were you like, yeah, this is this is I belong here, or was it a shock to you, or what? Um, it's more like you know I had the the aha moment like people are people are starting to take notice like people are really starting to <clears throat> like find out who i am so so it's like the, the hard work that you put in yeah all right so again we're, we're two months for the draft you mentioned that you know what you're looking to to work on so draft day you get picked up by a team what's the first thing you're gonna buy <laughs> you should get your first check of course <laughs> I mean, I've always said I'm going to get my dream car, which is a BMW i8. Um, but uh, I don't know. I, that, I think a car would definitely be my first. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm thinking if it were me, I, I would definitely buy a car first. <laughs> my mom and dad already got their house. Right, so, right. So I, I buy a car. Well, man, I, I, I thank you for, for coming on the NBA Big Board Podcast letting the audience get a chance to, to know you. I've been following you all season. I can't lie and say, like, I knew you were the guy <laughs> three or four years ago. But I, I like kind of underdog stories because 
again, like you weren't the guy that everybody praised. You weren't the yeah. guy that kind of got spoiled in the process. You worked and worked and worked. And I feel like I can kind of relate to that because I'm living out my dream. You're living out yours, but it's, it's work behind it. And right. So, you know, nobody knew who I was a year ago. So, all right, all right man, thank you for yep. coming on. Appreciate you for having me. Yep, no problem. All right, that was Jake LaRavia. I'm Rafael Barlow. Thank you for tuning in. We're out.